All right, so this week I've got something that's pretty cool using 3D in Photoshop CS5 Extended. Now, and every now and then you're going to find yourself experimenting with certain features in Photoshop, and then you'll make a discovery that really has no practical use in the world. It just has a lot of cool factor to it, and that's the case here in that we're going to create a 3D DNA strand entirely from scratch here inside Photoshop. Really kind of a cool use of the 3D tools and gives you a good idea of how you can mask shapes to get uh, certain effects. So we're going to begin by starting with a vector shape that I've created. Here is a shape of a kind of a shape of a dumbbell, really. It's got two, uh, two balls at each end with a bar going in between. Well, Simply to create that is just a matter of going and grabbing a shape tool. We're going to draw it as a shape. Hold down the shift key. I'm just going to draw out a um, circle here. Then make a duplicate by holding down the option key and the, sh and the shift key. And then clicking and dragging a duplicate over to the other side. And then just going in here and grabbing the rectangular shape tool. Drawing a box in between them so it overlaps. And then simply selecting them. Align and then click the Combine button up here in the Options bar and fuses all of those shapes together quickly and easily. So I'm going to go back to the shape I originally created and notice um, when, when you have to think about this is that a DNA strand pretty much if you looked at it, if you sliced it down the middle, it would almost look like this where it had two, two balls like this and the strand in between. So as if we're looking at it from the top before it is twisted. So with that shape created, I'm going to go back into the Layers panel and create a new blank layer. Now we're going to go ahead and fill that layer with 50% gray. So just press Shift Delete and use 50% gray, normal, 100%. Okay. So with the shape selected and our new layer active, I'm going to go under the 3D menu and go down here to Repousse and choose Selected Path. Now it's going to go ahead and apply an extrusion to that shape. Notice there it is. The default extrusion is applied, but I'm going to go ahead and increase that depth of that extrusion right here in the extrude section to its maximum setting, which is 10. So we're getting that twisting shape there. It looks pretty good. Go back to the home position. I don't need my lights right now. So it's extruded looking pretty good. So back to the home position. We're looking at it from the front. And now we're going to go over here into the twist setting right here and set that to 450. And it's going to twist my shape. If I go over here and rotate it around, you can see it really starts to take on the look of a DNA strand. Now the problem here, uh, the first problem here is that it's really jagged on the edges. And that's just a matter of going in here into the panel, into the scene settings, and changing the mesh quality from draft to best. And it will go ahead and take a second here, and it's going to go ahead and smooth out those lines, giving us a much more realistic looking DNA strand. So there we go, it's nice and smoothed out and looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the home position, just click on that home button and go ahead and click OK in the Repousse panel now that the strand is created. Now, I'm gonna use my regular uh, 3D object rotate tool here in the toolbar and go ahead and tilt the object so we can see what is going on here. So let's tilt that down, there we go. So looking like a DNA strand, we've got the strands on both sides that are spiraling around each other and then the middle area. Now, typically on a DNA strand, the middle area is made up of a bunch of rungs, uh, like a ladder. You can almost think of it as a twisting ladder. So we need to um, open up that space in between there. Now we're going to do that using an opacity mask on this 3D object. So let's go ahead and open up the 3D panel, go under window, go to 3D. And inside of here, we're going to go over to the third icon at the top, which is the Materials section. And in the list right here, it represents uh, each mesh of our 3D object, which we've got the front inflation, back inflation, back bevel, and front bevel, and then the exclu extrusion material, which is what we're looking at here. The front and back would be those flat ends of this DNA strand, whereas this area we're looking at now is the extrusion material. So we're going to go ahead and, and uh, concentrate on that. So I've got that extrusion material highlighted. We're going to go down here to the um, bottom of the panel and go to the opacity setting. Click on the folder icon and choose new texture. Now this is going to ask us to create a new file, which will be the opacity mask file. We're going to go ahead and make it the same size as our existing document. This document is 10 by 10 inches. 
at 125 pixels per inch. We're going to make it the same size. This is important. You do want to make sure your document is the same size and click OK. Now it doesn't open the document. All it does is create the document in the file. Now we need to go back into that menu and go down here and choose Open Texture. Now inside here is where it starts to get a little complicated. In fact, it took me a while to sort this part out, but in the end it works pretty well. So I'm going to actually move this over to the side so you can see what's going on. Even though we're looking at two files, this file is linked to this original file as an opacity mask, meaning it works like a layer mask where the black, anything we put black in this file is going to hide the image. Anything that's white is going to reveal it. So first thing is I'm going to go ahead and invert the background. I'm going to go ahead and make the background black by pressing Command or Control I. And let's go ahead and create a new blank layer. Unlike a layer mask, a 3D opacity mask can support layers. You don't have to work with a flat document. So, I'm going to go ahead and first take, just to give you an idea of how this works, I'm going to take a, just a rectangular selection and draw a box across the middle here. In fact, I'm going to do a couple. Let's do this one and, and then fill those with white. Now, if I jump back over to the original file, it's going to update based on that opacity setting and only reveal those areas where the white is. Notice there's the two bars and that's represented by these two white bars here. So that is how that mask works. So knowing that, I'm going to go ahead and make a selection. Let's actually bring up my rulers here. So on this document, on the new layer, I'm going to make a box, a vertical box here on the left side, two inches wide and going the entire height of the document. And we'll go ahead and fill that with white. Then we're going to take that same box that we just created and make a duplicate. Option drag it to the right side and hold down the shift key to constrain left or right movement. And we're only going to have it cover the last inch of this image. So two inches on this end, one inch on this end. And when you jump back over to the original file, what's going to happen is you'll see it reveals one strand. It's cutting out the middle area here, but that one strand is all that's visible based on the positioning of these bars here. Now to reveal the other one, we're going to make a box at the four inch mark, going all the way to, uh, down the entire document again and go down to three inches. Because each one of the strands in the image wraps around as a three inch area. So, and, and this is kind of weird how this works, is that this two inches and this one inch overlap, they kind of repeat a pattern, which takes care of this end. In the middle here, we're gonna fill this selection with white, so it takes care of that strand. And when I jump back over to this, this original file, watch what happens, there the other ring shows up. So now we gotta make visible the rungs in between. In fact, I'm gonna elongate this, but this using the axis widget here in the Y factor and just stretch that out a little bit. There we go. So now to get the rungs on the DNA strand, we're just going to make a selection along the top here on a new layer. Make it a little wide. Fill that with white. Now keeping it selected, I'm going to press Option Command T. Put that stripe into um, step and repeat mode. Hold down the shift key and just hit the down arrow several times till we move this uh, uh, shape down right about there. Press enter. And again, I'm going to hold down shift, option, command, and then press T over and over and over all the way down the file. So now when I jump back over here, we should only see the individual rungs show up on our DNA strand. And voila, there you have 3D DNA right there inside Photoshop. Now, of course, once you're done with that, let's go ahead and close this file here. We can go back in to that 3D file, or into the 3D panel, rather, and go to that extrusion material and increase the reflection property. And if we do a quick render of our shape, I'm gonna go into the scene section and go down here and do a ray trace draft, it will render the reflections based on the positioning of the objects, very subtle, and then it will also use the lighting that is applied by default to this shape and generate shadows, giving the overall shape a much more realistic look. There you can see some shadows are being generated. Very, very cool way of utilizing 3D to 
pull off a very interesting 3D trick. Like I said, it doesn't have a whole lot of practical use in the real world, but if you master this, you will certainly have a cool trick to show your friends of what kind of cool stuff you can do inside Photoshop. So I hope you're experimenting with 3D. Uh, give us a try and play with it. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and have, or if I don't, I don't remember if I mentioned this, I'm going to go ahead and have this very file uh, available as a download. So you can download it, look at the uh, layered file, look at the 3D file and see what's really going, what really is going on here. Because it really helps. It's one thing to see it, but it's one thing to really break down a, the layered file yourself and really get a good idea of what is going on here. But uh, there's my cool 3D trick of the week. I hope you enjoy it and we'll see you next time.